Good morning and welcome to our church at home service this morning. My name is Charlotte and I am the children's and families worker at Holy Trinity and it is a pleasure to welcome you to our service this morning. I've just got a couple of notices for us to start with. The first is about private prayer. Now you may be aware that the church is open for private prayer on Tuesdays and Fridays between 9.30 and 12. We're aware that this might not be the best time for everybody so we are carefully and considerately thinking about how we're able to cater for more people. Please do bear with us as there is a lot to think about and we want to keep everybody safe. If you want prayer, please do remember that the prayer at htnailz.org.uk email address is out there for you. Please do email in any prayer requests and the team would love to pray for you. My second notice is about another part of the church reopening. The Trinity Garden will be reopened on Tuesday between 9.30 and 12.00. Please remember that social distancing rules are still in place and do keep an eye on the church news for any more information about this. But I hope that you're able to enjoy our beautiful garden this summer. And thank you so much to the team of people who've been working so hard to keep it looking so beautiful. So thank you. This week, I caught up with Kev, our youth worker and we had a chat about what we've been up to over lockdown with the children and young people but also what we have got planned for the summer for the children and young people in our church family but also the wider community hi kev how are you hello yeah i'm good thank you how are you good yeah i'm good thank you so what have you guys been up to with the young people uh, so since a lockdown began, uh, on a Sunday morning, we have been doing Pathfinders every Sunday. Nice. Um, and that's roughly been, well, we're getting a bit longer as time goes on. We're probably about 45 minutes now. When sometimes they have to log back in, but they don't mind. Uh, and we've been, <laughs> we've been running through acts. Um, so we decided to um, pick a book and to kind of run through it because we're, con we're kind of aware that we always... Um, either rush through uh, a book or we pick a theme yeah. and we don't really get to like get stuck into it so we decided to go with Acts and look at the early church uh, and obviously there's a lot in it and a lot of really cool stuff happens yeah. so we thought it would be a really good thing to um, yeah to do that in lockdown great uh, and then with the uh, outreach stuff um, we've been do I kind of made packages to give to all of the rock solid young people um, so I ended up baking about uh, 25 to 30 cupcakes, Whoa. hand icing them, you know, as you do, and then hand delivering them all, which was really good. It was an opportunity to um, either touch base with the young people or their parents or both. Um, so it was really good. So good. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. So like you, we've had uh, the Sunday sessions with uh, the children. And um, yeah, we've been looking at Bible characters and what we can learn from them. So we've looked at courage and hope and persistence and stuff like that and stuff that like grounds us um, in the Bible and in our faith. So nice. we've been, yeah, looking at uh, Old Testament characters and some New Testament characters as well. So yeah, the children uh, love it. And I get to, we have many tangents. We learn about lots of different things. Um, and yeah, they, um, yeah, they engage really well. And yeah, it's so lovely to see them. Um, on a Sunday morning and hear about their weeks and what they've been up to and yeah and then with morning break uh, I read a story every week for them um, and upload that to the Facebook page um, and then with GoZone we've had a couple of uh, GoZone sessions on Zoom um, and yeah. Yeah, yeah we're looking we're looking forward to yeah having more of them after the summer so nice. yeah it's been really great oh so what have you got planned for the summer for the young people? Ah, well, very exciting uh, and very scary at the same time. Um, I've decided that it would be really good to offer something for the young people over the summer, especially with kind of 
uncertainties of whether people are going to be able to wait, go away on holiday or if families have had like if parents have been furloughed then obviously their income has potentially dropped a little bit so holidays they maybe were going to go on they might not be able to now so what we are going to be doing is the HT Youth Summer Staycation, wow. which is going to be over three days in August, the beginning of August, the 4th, 5th and 6th of August. Uh, and it's going to be all online, all virtual stuff. So we're going to be looking at the theme of influence. Mm. So who in our lives influences us? Uh, and over the three days, we're going to be looking at a different aspect of who influences us. I'm not going to give too much away because I want to try and keep it spoiler free. I want to keep the sort of mystery there for people to want to sign up to. Yeah. Um, but yes, all, people are interested in signing up. It's for anybody who is uh, in year seven right through to sixth form. So 11 year, years old, straight up to, through to 18 years old. Um, we're going to be releasing a YouTube video every morning at about 11 o'clock because I know that young people like a lion. I like a lion. So we're going to be live premiering a YouTube video at 11, which will introduce the day's theme. It will be a little talk on the theme and then we'll be setting an activity or a challenge for them. And then in the afternoon, we're going to be meeting via Zoom for them to showcase their activity slash challenge. Uh, and also offer them an opportunity to catch up with each other and, and sort of hang out. Uh, and then on the last day, we're going to also do a quiz. So we're going to end with a, with a summer staycation quiz. Nice. And there is going to be a prize Ooh. for the winning team. Again, I'm not saying too, I'm not going to give too much away. because You know, we want the mystery, but there will be a prize on offer. Um, yeah. So yeah, really, really uh, excited and looking forward to it. Um, obviously, it's the first thing like this that I have done and probably the church has done but we really want to offer something to the young people so hopefully people will be interested and if anybody watching at home is kind of being like oh my grandkid or my kid might interest like might be interested in that then send them over to the website there'll be a like a link that they can click on to sign up um and yeah should be good yeah we'll see. That sounds so fun and so yeah looking forward to it yeah, yeah. how about you i know that you've got something Coming up pretty soon. Yeah, so we've got Holiday Club starting on the 20th of July. Um, so, and yeah, people have signed up, which is really good. And nice. we've got YouTube premieres at half past nine. Um, a bit every, earlier then. A little bit earlier. Yeah, I don't get so much of a lion. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. So we've got lots of craft and lots of challenges um, every day. And yeah, it's... um. I'm really looking forward to it and yeah we're so thankful for the team that have been involved putting it together as well and um yeah I hope that the that the kids really enjoy it as well because it's been a lot of fun to make a little bit different from holiday club uh from the years past but I'm so glad that we're still able to to put it on and put it out there um and yeah we've got like a zoom party at the end of the week nice. so not a quiz but we're having a little zoom party so that should be really good as well amazing yeah so how can we pray for you how can the church pray for you uh i think the main thing uh that would be appreciated at the moment is the summer staycation just because as i said it's completely new not something that i've ever done before like a virtual version of this yeah. um so yeah just prayers that like it comes together and it works and uh young people sign up and engage in it even if they only sort of watch the video and they can't make the Zoom or they do the other way round, like just, yeah, that young people would, would be engaging with it. That would yeah. be the main prayer point from me, I think. How about, how about you? Great. Yeah, well, um, pray for Holiday Club. Um, pray that it reaches the right people and the children engage and just have a really good time. It's going to be very different to normal Holiday Club. Um, but yeah, I just pray that, they, they watch the videos and enjoy the videos and engage with the videos as well. And yeah, and just pray for the families over the summer as um, it's already been uh, a little bit different this year with the children being at home. Um, so yeah, prayer for, yeah, over the summer holidays um, because it's, yeah, a little bit of an extended time as well. Yeah. So yeah, prayer for them too. 
So thanks so much, Kev. Oh, um, pleasure, thank you. Yeah, I really hope that the staycation goes well and the young people really enjoy it. Um, yeah, thanks so much for chatting today. Bye. Pleasure, thank you. Hi everyone. We're now gonna sing Great Is Thy Faithfulness. Do feel free to belt it out at home. Today's reading is Ruth, chapter 3. Ruth and Boaz at the threshing floor. One day Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, should I not try to find a home for you where you will be well provided for? Is not Boaz, with whose servant girls you have been, a kinsman of ours? Tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash and perfume yourself and put on your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you're there until he's finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet and lay down. In the middle of the night something startled the man and he turned and discovered a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant Ruth, she said. 
spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a kinsman redeemer. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You've not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All my fellow townsmen that know you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am near of kin, there is a kinsman redeemer nearer than I. Stay here for the night, and in the morning, if he wants to redeem, good, let him redeem. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognised, and he said, Don't let it be known that a woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, Bring me the shawl you are wearing and hold it out. When she did so, he poured in six measures of barley and put it on her. Then he went back to town. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, How did it go, my daughter? Then she told her everything Boaz had done for her and added, He gave me these six measures of barley, saying, Don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said, Wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens. For the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello and let me add my welcome to Church at Home with Holy Trinity Nelsie. So glad you can join us. And we're continuing our journey, our exploration through the Old Testament book of Ruth. And our theme today is belonging. It's all about belonging. I think in us, we all have that desire to belong somewhere, don't we? The strange thing is that during this coronavirus pandemic, sometimes our houses, where often we think we belong, have become a bit like prisons that we want to get out of. But I think in each of us, there is this desire to be able to call somewhere home, to, be call, to call some family and friends our own. We love to belong. Now, at first glance, the book of Ruth might seem as though it's just a, a rom-com, a romantic comedy. You know, boy meets girl over barley field. They have a misty-eyed encounter one evening, and who knows, will they end up as Mr. and Mrs.? But it's a lot more than that. It's about belonging. So Ruth herself faced a crisis. It wasn't a pandemic, but it did leave family members dead. She was on her own. And she made a choice, a choice to go to Bethlehem in Israel instead of where she belonged as she grew up in Moab. There was a crisis. She made her choice. But will she belong? And that's really what this Ruth chapter 3 is exploring. Belonging. And I think that's an important question for all of us because we all need to know where we belong. And I don't just mean in terms of a house and family and friends, but I mean spiritually too. Do we truly belong? Well, we can learn from Ruth. But to understand that, we're going to have to understand the culture because it was very different to how we operate today. So that's where we're going to start, in understanding the culture of Ruth. These days, many people love ancestry, don't they? Tracing their family tree, discovering that I don't know, your great, 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 great grandfather was prime minister, or your great, 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 great aunt was shipped off to Australia as a convict, or whatever it might be. Well, for those Israelites in Ruth's day, this was crucial too, being able to trace your family line back to Abraham. Because, of course, God had made promises to bless Abraham and his descendants. But that's where the problem comes for Ruth and her family. We learned in chapter 1 that the head of the family, Elimelech, had died. His two sons also had died, leaving nothing but a trail of widows behind them. This was a family that was dying out. There is no heir. There is no one to carry on the family name. 
And we mustn't forget too the importance of land. It wasn't just about the family, it was also about the land they had, because God promised Abraham's descendants land. And each family would have a plot of land, but if that family grew too poor to work it, or could no longer work it, as in the case of Ruth's family, then that land would be sold. This is a crisis. It is a dying family. They have nowhere to belong. It may look as though it's a romantic comedy, but actually at this point, it's more like a tragedy. A family that's dying out with no way that they can say they belong. But there is some good news for this family. Well, if we've just been considering a dying family, we now have a costly rescue. And that's because we meet Boaz. Now, Boaz is like the dashing hero who comes riding over the horizon to rescue in this situation. Well, sort of. As soon as we hear that Boaz is a relative of Elimelech, it should make us think, because relatives had rights but also responsibilities when it came to family members. So let me just read you this little portion of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 25. If one of your fellow Israelites becomes poor and sells some of their property, their nearest relative is to come and redeem what they have sold. It was one of the safeguards that existed in those days to protect land. If land was sold because someone became too poor, another family, the next in line, could come and redeem it, buy it, so that the land didn't leave the family. And as strange as it might sound to you and me, the same thing happened with wives. Yes, so it meant that if a married man died without an heir, well, it was his brother's responsibility to marry the widow and provide an heir for that dead man so that the family could be continued. I know! We don't really do things like that these days, do we? No! So when we hear that Boaz is one of these close relatives of Elimelech, our ears should sort of prick up. Could Boaz be the solution to this family's demise? The context really helps to make sense of the story. So you remember that Ruth snuck across the threshing floor and when Boaz woke up, he found her at his feet. And so in Ruth chapter 3, verse 9, we hear what happened. Let me read. Who are you? He asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. Now, hopefully, the fact that Boaz is the guardian redeemer makes more sense now. He is the special one who can help this family, who can come to their rescue. But what's this business with spreading a garment over me? Well, why does she say that? Well, it might help to know that in Hebrew, the word for garment is the same word as the word for wing. OK, maybe that didn't help. Um, maybe it would help if we went back to chapter 2, verse 12, because there, this is the first time that Boaz and Ruth meet, we hear that word used. Chapter 2, verse 12. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. You see, Ruth made a decision that she wanted to be under the care of Almighty God. Now she wants to be under the care of Boaz. She wants him to spread his garment over her in the same way that the Lord has spread his wing over her so that she belongs. She wants to belong. And in effect, she's really asking him to marry her. Um, so will he say yes? Will he say no? Well, what he actually says is, I'd like to, but, 
And here's the problem. There's actually a closer relative than Boaz. And that closer relative might thwart the whole of this romance. And so chapter 3 is left on the edge of a cliffhanger. What is going to happen next? And you might be thinking, oh, I need to know what happens. Well, don't you worry. Decided to help you out. And I've invited Helen back to read a few verses of chapter 4 so we find out how this ends. And so we continue. Ruth 4, verses 1 to 10. Meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate and sat there. When the kinsman redeemer he had mentioned came along, Boaz said, Come over here, my friend, and sit down. So he went over and sat down. Boaz took ten of the elders of the town and said, Sit here, and they did so. Then he said to the kinsman redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from Moab, is selling the piece of land that belongs to our brother, Elimelech. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here and of the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, do so. But if you will not, tell me, so that I will know. For no one has the right to do it except you, and I am the next in line. I will redeem it, he said. Then Boaz said, on the day you buy the land from Naomi and from Ruth, the Moabitess, you acquire the dead man's widow in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. At this, the kinsman redeemer said, then I cannot redeem it because I might endanger my own estate. You redeem it yourself. I cannot do it. Now in earlier times in Israel, for the redemption and transfer of property to become final, one party took off his sandal and gave it to the other. This was the method of legalising transactions in Israel. So the kinsman redeemer said to Boaz, buy it yourself, and he removed his sandal. Then Boaz announced to the elders and all the people, today you are witnesses that I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion and Marlon. I've also acquired Ruth the Moabitess, Marlon's widow, as my wife, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property, so that his name will not disappear from among his family or from the town records. Today, you are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, there we are. Hooray! Wonderful news. Boaz and Ruth can live happily ever after. But it was a close-run thing, wasn't it? because this other guardian redeemer, the closer relative, was initially quite keen to get in on the act and buy the land, but then he backed out. And so, wonderfully, Boaz and Ruth can make their wedding plans. But it's the little exchange between Boaz and this other guardian redeemer that is quite revealing, because it reminds us how costly it is, or it would have been, for that guardian redeemer. He would have had to pay money to buy the land out of his own pocket. But then he would have inherited a wife with whom he'd have to have had an heir. And then that heir would walk off with that land. And all of it would be in the widow's dead husband's name. It was costly. And that is why this guardian redeemer would not do it. But Boaz proved that he was a redeemer, that he was willing to pay the price so that Ruth could belong. And that is why Ruth is such a helpful story for you and for me, because it's all about how we can belong through a costly rescue. And the message for us is all about Jesus. Because God used these events, even though they were 3,000 years before in history, to teach us what he was going to do through Jesus. Because Boaz is a figure that reminds us of what Jesus would come to do. And you and me, well, we're a bit like Ruth. We're helpless and we're homeless. We might not feel like that. But we are. We're on this earth, living in this world, and yet we're simply passing through this life 
We're only temporarily here. It's more like we're no fixed abode. We're floating around in this world with no future beyond the grave. But we can do what Ruth did. Ruth turned away from the things that were against God. So she moved out of Moab. Moab was full of detestable worship of a false god, Chemosh. She turned her back on that and walked away and instead chose the God of Israel. She sought him to go under his wing, under his garment. And we can do the same. We can turn away from all those things in our lives that are against God, what we call sin. And we can choose God. We can ask him to take us under his wing. Ask him to spread his garment over us so that we belong. And then we find we do belong. We have a new family, God's own family, and we have a new land, the promised land of eternal life, where we can dwell physically forever. It is a gift from Almighty God to us, if we accept it, that we can belong. And it's all because of Jesus. Because, of course, when Jesus came, he was the Boaz figure who rescued us at a cost. It cost him his life. He died taking our death on him. He died in our place, taking our sin on him to give us new life, new hope, so that we could belong. Ruth, it's a story packed with meaning. It may look just like a romantic comedy, but there's a message in there for us. And one particular thing that I find really helpful is it essentially tells us how to become a Christian. I'm talking about that moment where Ruth asked Boaz to pull his garment over her. It's a picture, I think, of what it means to become a Christian. It's about us realising, first of all, that we're helpless, that we're hopeless, that we are in effect dying and we need a rescuer, someone who can rescue us. It's about choosing Jesus to be that rescuer, coming to him and asking him if we can be part of his family. It's about committing to him, a bit like husband and wife, for better and for worse, and standing by that commitment as we walk forward with Jesus. And it's about enjoying the new relationship, that wonderful blessing of a new relationship with Jesus, not just now, but forever. It's a great picture of what it means to become a Christian. Uh, this part of Ruth is, is about belonging. And that's true for you and me too. It's about choosing where your home will be. If you've chosen that your home will be with Jesus, I hope you enjoy and rejoice in that more and more and just delight in the fact that your future and now you're secure, you belong. If you haven't yet decided, then I hope you will choose to turn to Jesus, to belong with him, to make him your home. Because when you go to him for a home, you find a welcome, such a welcome, a rich and warm welcome. No cost is too great. The price is paid. Welcome in to God's eternal family. My question for you is this. Where is home? for you. You are the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. You're here What a beautiful name.
It happens quite often, someone getting stuck in the mud at Western Supermare and having to be rescued, these days by Minnie Ho Hovercroft. So when I read Psalm 40 verse 2, it came to mind. He lifted me out of the slimy pit and out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Let's make the Lord being a rock his rockiness, his reliability, his redeeming strength, our focus as we bring to him our prayers this morning. O Lord, our rock in whom we trust, you keep us firmly rooted when all around is shifting sand. Upon you we can stand firm when the waters crash about us. In you we find peace and protection, for you are the faithful one, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. At the end of each of the prayers that we're going to uh, say now, when I say, hear us, O God, our rock, please respond by saying, in you we place our trust. Hear us, O God, our rock, in you we place our trust. So let's pray. First, for our government. Almighty God, ruler of all, have mercy on the leaders who seek popular applause rather than following the ways of truth, integrity and righteousness. Give us leaders who stand firm against oppression, who speak in favour of the weak and downtrodden, who legislate for justice for the poor and an end to discrimination. Give them wisdom to choose the right and to perform it with courage and faithfulness. Hear us, O God, our rock. In you we place our trust. Amen. Secondly, let's pray for our schools and all young people. Lord Jesus, your care for our children is greater than ours. We cry out to you for all who have lost many weeks of education and interaction with their peer groups and their teachers. We thank you that nearly all children have escaped the worst of the virus and now we pray that they may stay healthy and get back to learning in happy groups with meaningful education in schools that have adequate resources and re-motivated staff. Hear us, O God, our rock. In you we place our trust. Amen. Thirdly, let's pray for the poor across the world. Merciful Father, whose heart is for the poor and the oppressed, we cry to you for help for the distressed people of our world, for the hungry of the Yemen, for the Rohingya refugees of Myanmar, for the Syrian refugees across southern Europe, for all who have been uprooted from their homes and who face the scourge of coronavirus. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy. And Father, in the UK, we pray for the unemployed, for those whose businesses have collapsed or are about to go under, and for all whose mental health is failing following the lockdown. Show us the way, O Lord, to renew our national life in ways that reflect your kingdom in this world. Hear us, O God, our rock, 
In you we place our trust. Amen. Fourthly, let's pray for our local community. Renew us, O Lord, in every aspect of the life and the thriving of our neighbourhoods and streets, pubs and shops, restaurants and gyms, churches and playgrounds. Your kingdom come, O Lord. Hear us, O God, our rock. In you we place our trust. Amen. And let's unite our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. That brings us to the end of our service today. Thank you so much for joining us from your homes. Do keep thinking about the question that James posed to us from his sermon. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who worked so hard to put these videos together. We are truly blessed. My prayer for us this week is that we can take something from this service. That might be a challenge or an encouragement but something that we can continue to think about this week. And we look forward to joining together next week for another Church at Home service. So take care and God bless. Bye.
never stop, you never stop. Working.